You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We're now going to be talking on the phone to uh, Peter. Firstly, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. So I was hoping you could introduce yourself to our listeners and perhaps tell them a little bit about yourself before we move on to uh, our questions. Absolutely. My name's Peter Mavitt and I'm the CEO and uh, Director of Studies for the London College of Clinical Hypnosis. So what does the research reveal about uh, how people feel about hypnotherapy? Well, what we're seeing is there's an increasing interest in hypnotherapy building up across certainly the country and certainly within the Isle of Sheppey and the surrounding area region. Um, What we're seeing is that people are starting to come more towards hypnotherapy than they've ever done in the past, seeing that it can be used for a wide variety of presenting issues such as um, weight control, stress management, anxiety management and so on. So uh, do you think that uh, stage hypnotherapy is uh, good for um, sort of that, that profession or is it bad? Because we all think of, you know, these sort of stage shows where somebody thinks they're, uh, you know, to sort of pick the typical example, think they're a chicken and make a fool of themselves on stage. So uh, is it sort of good or bad for the um, profession? It's a double-edged sword, really, because certainly the stage hypnotists have bring people people's awareness of hypnosis and hypnotherapy, um, it, it increases it. However, on the other side of it, it gives a very false impression of what hypnotherapy is about. Um, in fact, it's uh, been seen that around your region, it, it, 24% of people believe that stage hypnosis have scared people away from clinical hypnotherapy. And that's probably because of the fact that the stage hypnotists rely on giving the impression that they are in control of the person that they've hypnotized and that they're doing these things, like you said, clucking like a chicken and so on. What the public don't realize is these people are very carefully selected. They go through a whole host of what we call suggestibility tests purely so that they're going to be good fun, good entertainment. With hypnotherapy, anyone can benefit from that. So when they come to see us, we're about helping to put that person's mind to see, helping them to understand that in order to uh, work with us, it's not a case of me, the therapist, controlling the person. Far from it, I can't do that. I help that person to regain control of an area of their life that they've lost control over. I can't make them do it. Yeah, I must say, because it does always make you think, is there something left in your mind or is that trigger always there when you watch these sort of stage shows? Um, These triggers they do with the stage shows, they do fade over time. Uh, But one of the problems I personally have with stage shows is that once you've been up there, once you've gone, there's little contact with the stage hypnotist after that. Uh, With a hypnotherapist, we work with somebody over a a period of time. So we get to know them, we get to help them. Um, Should there be any issues that come up in between sessions, we can be there to help them through that so that they end up achieving whatever it is they're wanting to see us for. So should hypnotherapy be regulated or are formal qualifications sufficient to give that credibility to the profession? Well, certainly the qualifications, having formal qualifications is a step towards credibility, absolutely, because with formal qualifications, the establishment understands what this qualification is. The general public can have some form of confidence that the the person that they're going to see is assessed at a nationally understood level. But we also think there very much should be regulation brought in that will govern how people um, uh, train, the curriculum that they're following and so on, which all does come under a uh, um, uh, proper qualification framework. But I think it's, it's useful to, to help the general public understand that people certainly have had a proper amount of training. Um, with, within the Isle of Sheppey uh, region, 
there are 74% of people who aren't even aware that anyone can call themselves a hypnotherapy. Yes, I mean, uh, I didn't realise. I mean, I assume there must be some sort of regulation. So, uh, yeah, it's something you don't always think about or really realise. No, not at all. Anyone can pick a book up, read it over the, over the evening, during the evening, and set themselves up as a hypnotherapist the following day. Which in some ways is, uh, I suppose, quite worrying, um, you know, because uh, you, know, you are almost, um, or they would be experimenting in a way, wouldn't they? It's rather, yes, I mean, with someone like myself who's had a minimum of three years training, uh, to know that, I mean, I know when somebody's presenting to me, I know uh, how to understand what they're presenting with, when I need to refer that person on, warning signs and so on how to handle a person, whereas if you just read a book, you don't have that wealth of knowledge, nor experience, nor background. So uh, what should people um, look for if they want to train as a hypnotherapist? They need to look for an organisation that trains people to a uh, 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 in in a classroom-based scenario, so not an online course, because after all, we're working with the general public, therefore you need to be working with actual real people when you're training. They also should be looking for an organisation that has some form of validation or accreditation. And when I say validation and accreditation, it means external, so another organisation, independent of the training organisation who's validating that. So where can our listeners find out more information? Well, to find out general information about hypnotherapy and if they want to go and visit a therapist, then they can visit the British Society of Clinical Hypnosis website, which is www.bsch.org.uk. Or for training, they can look at the London College of Clinical Hypnosis website, which is www.lcch.co.uk. Well, Peter, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time out to talk to our listeners here at BRFM Bridge Radio. Thank you very much.